Hebrew kingdom building. Y'all gonna still have to flip. And you shall command the children of Israel that they bring the pure oil, olive. And what's after that? So the olives have to be beaten. They have to be pressed for the light. To cause the lamp to burn continually. What's that lamp? What's the lamp? That's the menorah. That's the menorah. Y'all know that the menorah was made out of a beaten work too. The menorah had had to be. It was a beaten work in order to be a to, to, in order to be a vessel of light. It had to be a beaten work first. Okay. That's nice. That looks nice. So um, the olives had to be beaten. Pressed, oppressed, and that caused oil to come out. And that oil is what enabled, let's look at verse 21. It says what the oil does. In the tabernacle of meat and outside the veil, which is the testimony, Aaron and his son shall tend it from Erev until Boker. Before Yahuwah, it shall be a statue forever. To their generations, I'll be half of the children. No, nope. that's the wrong. It's right here, my bad. To cause the lamp to burn always or to burn continually. So it's the oil that causes the light to stay lit continually. We know that the oil symbolizes, we know we've been here long enough to know that the oil symbolizes the Ruach. I should have said leadership, don't say nothing. The oil symbolizes the Ruach HaKodesh. Did y'all know that? So the oil represents the Ruach, the Ruach HaKodesh. The Ruach also, so if the oil represents the Ruach, it's the Ruach that keeps your light going. So in order to keep that light, you want to be, we, we, we have to be lights, right? We, we're supposed to be a light to the nations. That's a, that's a role for Yahuwah's people is to be a light to the nations. Right now, our function right now is to be a light to the four corners. A light to the nations. So in order to be a light, you have to have the ruach, the oil. All right. So if the oil symbolizes the ruach, that means that the oil also symbolizes the breath of life. Why is that? Because the breath of life is the ruach of Yahuwah. I want y'all to get what I'm saying so y'all can follow what we're about to go to. So Yahuwah breathes his Ruach in people to bring them to life. That's his Ruach. So that's still oil. All right, let's keep going. All right. So the olives are to be put into the lamp. The, the lamp is the menorah. So the olives come from what? An olive tree. But uh, hopefully y'all paid attention to the Torah portion last week. The menorah is what kind of tree is the menorah? Uh, oh, man. I thought y'all was reading the Torah portion last week. Not leadership. Not leadership. The menorah is an almond tree. Who said it first? Oh, I'm not even surprised. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> See, she be reading the Torah. Man, that's what I'm talking about. The menorah is an almond tree, y'all. Let's go back to the last Torah portion right here. I don't even got to go there because I've been doing better. Got the slides up. Make a menorah of pure gold. Hammer out its base and shaft and make its flowers, flower-like cubs, buds, and blossoms of one piece with them. Six branches are to extend from the sides of the lampstand. Three on one side, three on the other. Three cups shaped like almond. almond flowers with buds and blossoms ought to be on one branch, three on the next branch, and the same for all six branches. The menorah is an almond tree, but you, but Yahuwah commanded for the fruit of another tree to be pressed and, 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 and beaten in order for life to be in the almond tree in a sense. Y'all see what I'm saying? So we're talking about two trees. 
Okay, okay, let's keep looking. Let's keep looking at some stuff here. So, the breath of life is what causes resurrection as well. Y'all remember the dry bones uh, uh, prophecy? He said, breathe on these, prophesy to these bones. Prophesy, breathe on these bones. He, he, and he breathed on the bones and they, what, came to life. That's resurrection. You know what I'm saying? Breathe on these dry bones. Breathe on these dry bones. So the olive oil was to be put in the almond tree. The fruit of the olive tree must be beaten and pressed in order to produce an oil that will cause life. It will cause actually resurrection in a sense. Okay? Y'all keep that in mind. So this is how an almond blossom looks. They really look cool. They really look cool. Um, huh? Man, look here. I don't mind. I don't mind. We can look into it. We can look into it. Yeah, they probably, if they, I don't know nothing about them, so, you know, I don't know. So, now I want y'all to, I want y'all to, 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 to really follow me. That's why you got to pay attention to really get what I'm trying to say here. The almond tree is about to dry bones waking up. Y'all. The bran branches are just bones. Those are the bones of a tree. The branches in a tree, those are just the bones of a tree. You get what I'm saying? And so, in order for the bones to come to life, they needed the breath of life in them. They needed the oil in them. In order for the bones to come to life, in order for the dry bones to wake up, and be living again, according to Ezekiel 37, Yahuwah had to breathe on those dry bones. In other words, put his ruach on them, which symbolizes the oil, olive oil. So the olive tree, no, I mean the almond tree, so this is what makes the almond tree special. Y'all can see it right now. This is what's so interesting. If y'all look out right, right now, we're not quite in spring yet, but we're transitioning early, early spring. You already see trees that look just like this already looking like this, don't y'all? They're the only thing. Everything else is still dead. But you have this certain types of trees that are the first to wake up from the dead. They're the first to resurrect. Y'all think it's by chance that Yahushua, his resurrection was in the spring? Spring is all about resurrection. That's why the beginning of the year is in the spring in the scriptures. It's all the dead things come back to life. I was, talking, I was just talking to the men about that the other day about the, uh, the watermelon plants. What, what would happen is in the winter when the watermelon plants would die and there wouldn't be no leaves on, she'd just be thinking they done and be ready to yank them up and, and uproot them. Like, no, nah, they'll, they'll come back. They'll come back to life in the, when the, when the, in the season. They'll come back, you know. They just, they just all over the place and they are, they dead. Like, uh, but uh, they'll come back to life. That's resurrection. That's the symbol of um, the, the almond tree symbolizes the resurrection is the point I'm trying to make because the reason why the almond tree is is special and I submit the reason why the almond tree is the menorah is because the almond tree is the first fruits of resurrection first fruits of the awakening they're the tree of resurrection they're the first tree to come to life in the in the, in the, when it's in the spring while everything else is dead the almond tree is looking like this y'all get it okay okay that's why the almond tree I submit is the menorah let's look at the Hebrew word. Now, 
I just told you that. Now let's look at the Hebrew word for almond, okay? The Hebrew word for almond tree is shaked. That's sheen, kuf, darlet. Sheen, kuf, darlet. That is, that is the Hebrew for the almond tree. Y'all, y'all listen to this, y'all. Pay attention. The almond tree means it's the appointed time for the pressing of Yahushua. It's the appointed time for the pressing of Yahushua. That's, the, that's what the word for almond tree is, the breakdown is. The appointed time for the pressing of Yahushua, the door. Or a better way to put it is it's the appointed time for the judgment of Yahushua. That's the almond tree. The appointed time for the pressing or judgment of Yahushua. Y'all following this? I know it's getting late. But it's very important information. Very, very important. Okay, okay. No worries. I'm holding on. I need y'all to get this. No worries. It's the appointed time for the judgment of Yahushua, the door. The appointed time for the judgment of Yahushua. Because y'all know, y'all know, remember um, the ox had the sheen and the sheen meant the, um, the harvesting too. Y'all remember that? What is the harvesting too? Isn't that, that separating the wheat from the tares? Isn't that, didn't, didn't Yahushua say when he comes to judge, he's going to separate the wheat from the tares? Man, y'all getting this. I can see it now. Hallelujah. Praise Yahushua. Let's go to Isaiah 61. Oh, yeah, let me say this too. So the appointed time for the pressing of Yahushua that is associated with the waking up or the resurrection of Israel. That is associated with the waking up or the resurrection or the dry bones waking up. Y'all still following? Y'all still y'all still walk, trying to walk? I'm trying to make it to, make it to where it's. Uh, that's why it took me a long time to get it together to try to make it succinct so it'll make sense. So y'all can follow it. So. The appointed time for Yahushua's judgment is associated with the awakening or with the dry bones waking up or with resurrection, the resurrection of Israel. So in other words, Yahushua's judgment is associated, you can say, with the almond tree. Let's go to Isaiah 61. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Yeah, now let's go to Isaiah 61 first. All right, I'm going to need y'all to turn to Isaiah 61 because, oh, you know what? I did put some of the slides, but I still want y'all to turn anyway, though. But I do got some. It's kind of small, so y'all still might need to turn. But the spirit of Yahuwah Alua is upon me. Remember, Yahushua had quoted this. Because Yahuwah has mashocked me. Don't you use the... Olive oil to mashak people. So the pressing of the olives is associated with the pressing of the multitudes too, isn't it? Isn't Yahushua going to judge and press the nations because they pressed the because they pressed his people? Isn't Yahushua going to judge the nations because the nations have pressed his people? The olive trees which is symbolic of the nation of Israel. Okay, let's keep going. All right. Because Yahuwah has anointed me to preach uh, the Basura, the good tidings, you know, the Basura. I like to say the Basura to the poor. He has sent me 
And just for uh, in case anybody didn't know, this is the script. This is the gospel. This is the in uh, the church. They would call it the gospel. It's the basura. The basura. This is where the good tidings, good news. They'll say the gospel. It just means good news. It's the basura. All right. To preach the basura to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to those in captivity, in other words. To proclaim liberty to the captives. What are we saying? Yahushua broke the chains off of Babylon. Yahushua broke the chains off of Babylon. Declared liberty to those in captivity. He broke the chains. He declared liberty to, to his people. And the opening of prison. To those who are bound. That's the cleansing of the bloodline. That's deliverance. To proclaim the acceptable year of Yahuwah. And what was after that? And the day of? Vengeance. And the day of? Vengeance. And the day of vengeance of our Lua. All right. Let's keep reading. To comfort all who mourn. To console those who mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy. For mourning. Oh, snap. Then the garment of praise for the Ruach of heaviness. Now he's talking about new garments, huh? Now he's talking about you're going to get new heaven. You're going to get eternal garments. That they may be called what? That they may be called what? So now this is associating this. The, the declaration of Yahushua. Liberty to the... He is associating people declaring liberty to the captives. He's associating de declaring vengeance against the nations with trees. So that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahuwah. But um, that they may be called trees of righteousness. The planting of Yahuwah. That he may be glorified. Let's keep going. And they shall now. Okay, now this is where we're at now. In a sense. In a sense. And they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. So the desolations of many generations are being repaired, right? Because um, the bloodlines are being redeemed. All those issues we have from our generations, the issues we have from our bloodline are being repaired and restored. Strangers shall stand and feed your flock. And the sons of the foreigner shall be your plowman and your vine dresser. So there's going to be a, a switch. There's going to be a switch as far as dominion is concerned. But you shall be named what? The priests of, priest of Yahuwah. They shall call you the servants of our Lua. You shall eat the riches of the heathen. And in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have what? Oh, man, come on. You can't make this up. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. So the fact that that we are we are we, we take seriously making sure that we give double honor to the leadership, double honor to our leaders, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to the Melakim, infinite honors, and honors, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is a sign that we are moving in this. And then I, I know I, I'm pretty confident that they wasn't. The Melakim wasn't didn't come up with this because they saw this verse and was like, oh man, we need to do double honors. They just moving by how the most high want them to move, just moving in obedience. And then you go into scriptures and you're like, oh snap. That's right there. This is associated with the um rebuilding of the nation. And the ministry is called Rebirth of a Nation. So there you go. When it talks about that the heathen will be your servants. And that how, they, uh, uh, how you will eat the riches of the nations and, and have kavod on you and glory on you and have these new garments uh, and, 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 and move in this uh, dominion. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. 
for I, Yahuwah, will love justice. I hate robbery for burnt offering. I will direct their work in truth and will make them an everlasting covenant. With them an everlasting covenant. Their descendants shall be known amongst the Gentiles. It's talking about us. Their descendants. That's us. You who showed us that's a, this is us. This is what's happening. This is actually already starting to happen now. Y'all just don't fully uh, see it yet, but the leadership sees it. <laughs> the Miller Kings see it. It's already happening now. And their offspring among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge them. That they, that they are the posterity whom Yahuwah has blessed. All who see them shall acknowledge them. That they are the posterity whom Yahuwah has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in Yahuwah. My soul shall be joyful in my allure. He has clothed me with, for he has clothed me with eternal garments. That's what garments of salvation is. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. How many times have we been like, man, we got, man, who has given us new garments? Giving us new garments. You has given us new garments. He given us eternal garments. How many times have we been saying that? He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, for as the earth brings forth its bud. Uh oh, that's talking about. As the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth. That's resurrection language. That's what the almond tree is all about. The almond tree is the first one to bud in the spring. It's the first thing to bud in the spring. As the garden causes the things that are sown in it to bring spore. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Y'all need to go back, go back where you at or something. All right. So Yahuwah Alua will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth. Before all the nations. Let me uh, repeat verse 11 again. For as the earth brings forth its bud, as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, that is resurrection he's talking about. Remember the third day? Third day, number three is the th number for resurrection. On the third day is when Yahuwah created the trees in the, in the, and that's when vegetation brought forth. All right. So as those things are brought spring forth, so Yahuwah Alua will cause righteousness and praise to be resurrected, in other words. Before all the nations. All right, let's keep going. Okay. All right. All right, let me see how the best way to, okay, so, all right, fam. All right, so we already established the, the Hebrew. So I told y'all that the almond tree is, is, um, in the, is the menorah and was chosen to be in a holy place because the almond tree symbolizes resurrection. Then I was able to show y'all that even by looking at the Hebrew word for almond tree. That the Hebrew word is about... <clears throat> The appointed time, the appointed time for the judgment of Yahushua, right? But also this same word for almond tree, shaked. Shakad is the same word, just a different um, vowel point. So shaked is H 8247. Shakad is H 8245. That literally can mean awakened. So the word for olive tree in Hebrew also means awakened or to be watchful, to be alert. Exactly, exactly. Y'all following this? All right. I must, I must stop keep asking y'all that. I just want to make sure. I know y'all probably tired of me asking y'all that. All right. So now let's look at um, but me bar no, uh, chapter seventeen verse eight. Y'all can just read it on the screen. Don't go there. You can read it on the screen. I got it in big, big letters. Y'all can read it from now, hopefully. But me bar seventeen verse eight. Now it came to pass. Now it came to pass on the next day, that Moshe went into the tabernacle of witness, and behold, the rod of Aaron or the stick of Aaron of the house of Levi 
had sprouted and put forth buds, didn't it? Had produced blossoms and yielded what? So just just hold that thought. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold that thought. Hold on. Um, <clears throat> verse nine. Then Moses brought out all the rods from before Yahuwah to all the children of Israel, and they looked, and each man took his rod. So this was a. Um, let's go there real quick, y'all. Number seventeen. I want y'all to know the context of this real quick. Let's go there. Let's go there. Number 17. Let me know when y'all get there. All right. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe saying, speak to the children of Israel and get from them a rod or a stick. Ooh. A rod or a dry stick. Or a branch? Y'all follow me? In the menorah branches? Six branches, ain't that what it said in Exodus 25? Have six branches on one side, six on the other, one in the middle? Okay, okay. Speak to the children of Israel and get from them a rod from each father's house, all their leaders according to their father's houses, 12 rods, write each man's name on the rod. And you shall write Aaron's name on the rod of Levi, for there shall be one rod for the head of each father's house. Then you shall place them in the tabernacle of meeting before the testimony where I meet with you, and it shall be that ro the rod of the man whom I choose will blossom, appointed. Oh, snap. Thus I will rid myself of the what? The murmurings or the complaints or the, the murmurings or the rebellion of the children of Israel which they make against you. So Moses spoke to the children of Israel and each of their leaders gave him a rod of peace for each leader according to their father's houses. Twelve rods and the rod of Aaron was among their rods and Moses placed the rods before Yahuwah in the tabernacle of witness and there's verse 8. Now it came to pass on the next day that Moshe went into the tabernacle of witness and behold the rod of Aaron of the house of Levi had sprouted and put forth buds. Y'all that was a sign of resurrection. He had a rod that was a dead stick. That's just a stick. It's, it's a, the rod, look, the rod is basically a branch that is no longer attached to the vine, so it does not have life in it. And for that to sprout forth almonds, sprout forth a live bud out of it, that is miraculous resurrection. In order for that to happen, Yahuwah had to blow his breath of life on that bud, didn't he? On that rod, I mean. There was olive oil on that mud for that to happen. I didn't know why I did this, but every Shabbat, you bar, what do I do with the rod every Shabbat when I come before and wash my hands? Going with olive oil. That goes back to Ezekiel 37 with the two sticks. That rod was a stick. And he caused the two sticks to come to, uh, to, to, to come to life by blowing his breath on it. In Ezekiel 37, it says, breathe on. That's why he said, breathe on these dry bones. Breathe on these dry bones. When you look it up in the Hebrew, it's ruah. Ruah. Breathe on these dry bones. Prophesy to these dry bones. All right, now let's look at the word menorah. Remember menorah. It's an almond tree, right? It's, a, it's an almond tree. It's a golden almond tree. All right. So the breakdown for this word is showing that the continuation of the nations is being secured by the revelation of the chiefs. 
Let me say it again. The continuation of the multitude or of the nations is predicated or secured by the revelation of the chiefs or the heads. In other words, the salvation of the world is predicated on the revelation of the people that Yahuwah has set up. The salvation of the world, the continuation of the sea of the nations is predicated or secured by the revelation of the chiefs. Y'all get it? Y'all following that? The continuation of the nations is predicated or secured by the revelation of the chiefs. That's the word menorah. Remember the menorah is lit continually. It's on fire. It symbolizes uh, the nation of Israel being a light to the nations. So that makes sense why menorah is named menorah. Here's an example. Remember what happened in Egypt, in Mitzrayim? Remember what we talked about when, uh, when uh, um, the big revelation came, when that, snow, that, that uh, uh, freeze hit Austin uh, about a month ago, and all those branches broke down? It was a whole lot of dry branches all over the, all, all over the assembly, uh, front yard and side, wasn't it? And... Do y'all remember when I was telling y'all that that was showing that whole blood, you, most high is, there's going to be a high death toll situations against the nations. In his vengeance against the nations, it's going to be high death toll things happening. Where whole bloodlines are going to, it was major branches. From hundred, those are hundred, I would guess those are about hundred year old trees out there. I said 50 year old trees at first until I actually went to this tree place to try to uh, buy trees for Torah land. And they were showing me what 15-year-old trees looked like. They were like 10K a tree. They were, I was like, oh, no, I can't do <laughs> Like, dang, I wanted that mother. They had already grown trees you can buy. And I was thinking, you know, maybe a few hundred dollars. Man, it was like, yeah, they got $10,000. Like, oh, snap. I can't do that. But um, they were like 15-year-old trees, though. I, I was guessing those were 50-year-old trees. No, looking at a 15, 20-year-old tree, no, nah, those are about 100-year-old trees out there, my guess, better guess. Whole branches fell from that freeze. That's whole bloodlines being cut, cut off, never to continue. Menorah is about the, the nations continuing. Y'all, let me tell y'all this. We talked about this uh, when, we, when, we, when we covered this. In Mizraim, Yahuwah cut off whole bloodlines. When he killed the firstborn of every house in Eat Mitzrayim, there were whole blood lines that were never to continue after that. Y'all understand that? There were people whose bloodlines didn't, they, 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 they no longer existed after that. He caused many, Yahuwah caused bloodlines to be extinct after that. He cut, off, he, he cut off the firstborn of everybody in Mitzrayim. It said there was not a house in Mitzrayim that didn't have, that didn't lose somebody. Then the whole Mitzrayim military came and tried to come after Israel, and he destroyed the whole military of Mitzrayim, cutting off. Whole. So after that high death toll event happened with the blood firstborn, then you had another high death toll event happen when they tried to follow the Israelites across the Red Sea. What am I saying? This is right after all that happened, and Yahuwah commanded them to put this menorah up. That was letting that the in, in the Hebrew is showing you that the, the nation the nations in order for them that their, 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 their hope in, in continuing is predicated on the revelation of the people Yahuwah set up. Right. So you know what? There were some people who actually of the other nations who actually were saved out of Mitzrayim. Remember that? They were called the mixed multitude. That's what the mem even symbolizes many times in Hebrew is multitudes. And what did they do? How, how were they saved? Because they heeded the revelation of the chiefs, which was Musha. And it's, so it was Musha, Moshe, but it was the people. See, Moshe he had a whole bunch of heads. Remember, he had 70 heads. They, how, how, did the, how did the multitude know to follow them? I submit that it wasn't just from Moshe, but it was from his heads, too. It was the chiefs who were duplications of Moshe. Because, you know, Egypt was huge. You know, you're talking millions of people. 
There was a whole mixed multitude who were saved because they were secured by the revelation of the chiefs. That's menorah. That's why the menorah is about being a light to who? The nations. All right. Y'all following that now? Okay, let's keep going. Because right now we're talking about trees. We're talking about trees. The only people who made it from Egypt were those who heeded the revelation of the chiefs. And it's going to be the same this time. That's why, what, we, what did we read in Isaiah 61? The nations were going to, they're going to come. They're going to, they're, going to, they're going to know that you are the people that are blessed by Yahuwah. They're going to know who you are. They're going to want to cling to you. That is, that, the same thing happened in Misraim. You're going to, you're going to have the, you, they're going to give you their possessions. That was in Isaiah 61. He said, you're going to boast in the glory of the, uh, of the Gentiles. That's what it means. They're, you're going to, they're going to give you their possessions. The same thing happened in Misraim. Because they're going to see you and they're going to know that you are the people of Yahuwah. And the ones that are smart, they're going to heed the revelation of you, the, the revelation of the chiefs, because they know that's the salvation. That's menorah. Being a light to the nations. Let's keep going. So we have the oil olive tree, right? This is where the oil that goes into the menorah comes from. Remember on Torah land, Yahuwah specifically wanted us to plant olive trees. We started out planting two trees. Do y'all remember that? For those who came. Remember that this tree has the oil in it, which symbolizes the Ruach HaKodesh. So does that mean that this tree has the breath of life in it? <gasps> Could that mean that this may be the tree of life? That's what actually started it uh, was a dream that you sent me when um, uh, most I was showing me that the little tree with the light, remember you said there was a light up thing that was shaped like a tree? And I was like, oh man, most I was showing me that's the tree of life. Could that be the tree of life spoken of in Genesis? Could that have been why Yahuwah wanted the menorah to be all the oil to be come from the olive tree. For all the anointing of the priests, all the anointing of anything that had to come from the olives. Nothing else. They had all kind of oils out there, man. They had frankincense. They had all kind of stuff. Well, there was another, uh, no, there was an anointing concoction, um, let me think. There was an anointing concoction oil that he had that was mixed with other stuff. But the oil for the lamps was, uh, the oil to burn the lamps, though, came from the olive. We started out planting two olive trees. Let me tell you all this. Man. Oh, no, I'm, 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 I'm going ahead of myself. All right. So... Let's keep, let's keep this going. Let's now, now that I'm talking, let's keep this going. I was supposed to wait to bring that out, but I couldn't help it. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> so, if that's the tree of life, and it's the oil that keeps the lamps burning continually in the holy place on the menorah, and remember the oil symbolizes the Ruach HaKodesh, which symbolizes the breath of life, then that means that the olive tree or the tree of life has the power of resurrection. Y'all remember Uriah's dream? Did you see it? Did you? They, wanted, they wanted that thing because they were saying that they wanted the power to resurrect, bring things back to life. Let's go to Zechariah 4, y'all. We're going to have to turn here. Zechariah 
Zechariah chapter 4. Yeah, who are revealing the mysteries to the code of shame, y'all? This is amazing. All right, y'all ready? Because I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to, for time, I'm gonna try to skim on through this. Zechariah 4, y'all ready? But I need y'all to read along, please. Because I'm gonna skim and y'all not gonna really get it if y'all don't read along. Now the Malak who talked with me came back and wakened me as a man who was wakened out of his sleep. Oh, y'all hear what they saying? They're talking about somebody being awakened out of sleep. That's resurrection. That's the almond tree, isn't it? All right, verse 2. And he said to me, what do you see? So I said, I'm looking and there is a menorah. Oh, man. He's talking about being awakened. And now he's talking about the menorah, which is the almond tree. Y'all see how this works? All right. Let's keep going. I'm looking, and there is a menorah of solid gold with a bowl on top of it, and on the stamp stand seven lamps with seven pipes to the seven lamps. So we got the menorah tree. Now what else it says? Verse 3. What does it say? So you got the menorah and two olive trees. What's going on here? What's going on here? Two olive trees are by it. One at the right of the bowl and the other at its left. When, um, when we had the two trees, um, we were at the Torah land. We were praying and then the Most High, boom, just showed it to me. We were trying to find out where to plant the two trees. And it came up. We were reading Ze Zechariah 4. I mean, uh, Ruach just had me just go there and we, we, I just read it. We had prayed and then I just read it to everybody. I'm like, oh, snap. Okay, I know it. This is where we've got to put the tree. Because I was going to different parts and trying to pray, and I wasn't getting no confirmation or nothing. I was like, man, let's just pray, y'all. was praying, was praying. We brought out Zechariah 4. I know. One on one, we started praying. Most high confirmed it right away. Went on the other end, hallelujah. He showed us where to put the two trees at, two olive trees. All right, let's keep going. Two olive trees are by it, one at the right of the bow and the other at its left. So I answered and spoke to the Malak. Who talked with me saying, what are these, my master? Then the Malak who talked with me answered and said to me, do you not know what these are? And I said, no, my master. So he answered and said to me, this is the word of Yahuwah to Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel means sown in Babylon. Zerubbabel was a governor. He was the governor of Israel at this time. Not by my might, nor by power, but by what, y'all? Are y'all following what's going on here? We just saw the two olive trees, the menorah, the oil goes, the oil means the ruach from the olive trees. Y'all get it? And he was asking, what does these two olive trees mean? What does it mean? And y'all see what the answer was? So he answered and said to me, this is the word of Yahuwah, not by my might, nor by my power, but by my olive oil. Not by my power, not by my might, but by my olives. Is that's what the uh, two olive, he was trying to ask what the two olive trees meant and the menorah that the Malak was showing them. All right, let's keep going. But by my ruach, says Yahuwah Sabo, verse 7. Who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? All right, let me help y'all real quick with the context of this verse. We went through this in the Midrash when we were covering Ezra and Nehemiah. It was in the beginning of the book of Ezra was when you saw Zerubbabel and Yahushua, the son of Zehozadak. This is when they were in captivity in Babylon and uh, when they were first being released from captivity. Do y'all remember that when we covered the Midrash in the book of Ezra? They were in captivity and it was time to get out of captivity. And so they were, re re they were actually, it, it was time to, they were building a, a nation now amongst, Is it, was, it was time for the rebirth of a nation. That's the, the context of this. That's the, Zerubbabel was the governor over Israel when they were trying to rebuild and rebirth the nation. Okay. So he saw two olive trees. I'm trying to show y'all this because them two trees, y'all would have never thought of getting no olive trees. I, I was thinking apples, pears, you know what I'm saying? Like when I'm thinking of getting fruit trees, olives, it just, that's just not one of those ones I was thinking about like eating on like that. I was with, I was with Manu, Maury Manu on the phone with him because he was the one buying the trees at that time. 
And he was walking around, kind of floating around, trying to see, like, man, just hold on, man, hold on. <laughs> All right, man, do you, do, you, do you know what kind of trees you want? Yeah, just hold on. I'm trying, I was trying to pray to see if the most high gave me a green light on anything. And then finally, um, he gave me the green light on the olive trees. And so, yeah, get the olive tree, get the olive tree. And I think at first I was saying to get like five of them or something. And then he was looking and he was like, well, they only have two of the other of the, of the two olive trees. And then they got they got a bunch of the smaller baby ones. I was like, okay, just get two of the two ones and then get three of the uh, smaller baby ones. And the most I was showing me, no, no, don't get the baby ones. So I, was like, I know the tree, I know Manu was like, man, because he was starting to get the, the trees. Like, no, 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 don't get the baby trees. No, never mind, never mind. Just get, the, just, get the, just get the two big trees, fam. Get the <laughs> so he's like, all right, all right, bet. All right, through, through. And so he went and got the two. That's how we ended up with the two olive trees that day when we planted, when we did that. So what I'm telling y'all is that's, that, that alone was a sign that the nation is being started. Those are the first trees we planted on Toro land ever. That Yahuwah is building a nation out of us. That was the first sign. This is the word of Yahuwah, the Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, but by my Ruach, says Yahuwah Sabaoth. Verse 7. Now look at this. This is important. Who are you, O great mountain? What are the mountains? That, that that's a symbol, symbolizes like the nations, Babylon. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. He's saying before the Mashal. Before the governor, you shall become a plain. Because what does Mashal mean? It's about the pressing of the nations. It's about the, the appointed time for the nations to be pressed by the shepherd. Is that right? I'm trying to go off memory now. It's about the nations being pressed by the shepherd. That's what it is. Told on. It's about the nations being pressed by the shepherd. So look, y'all, verse 7. What are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel you shall become a plain? Y'all remember when Yahushua said, if you have enough in you now, you can speak to the mountain and the mountain will move or something like that? Now y'all see what that really means? Zerubbabel wasn't going to war against nobody, so why'd they say that? I submit that Rubel was specialist at declaring against the heathen. He was moving in the tabernacle of Darwin. Verse 7, let's read it. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone. Y'all see this? With shouts of grace, grace to it. The capstone, that's the cornerstone. That's Yahushua. Because the Mashal. It's about the pressing, what was it again? The, the shepherd pressing the nations. The nations being pressed by the shepherd. <laughs> so first it started off with the two trees. It started off with the menorah. And then it goes into what? Judgment. No, wait. The two trees, the menorah. The resurrection of the nation being rebuilt and judgment. It's all tied in together. All right. Verse 8. Y'all following? Verse 8. Moreover, the word of Yahuwah came to me saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands shall also finish it. Then you will know that Yahuwah Sabaoth has sent me to you. For who has despised the day of small things? There's, there's some people who, who's not here anymore because they despise that. The day of small things. For these seven rejoiced to see the plumb line in the hand of the rubber So there was seven people, man. Seven Mushalim, I don't know. The stuff Chief Yahushua was bringing out when we were down there, actually. He was bringing this, all this stuff out. I've regurgitated a lot of the stuff he had just said when we was down there. Um, they are the eyes of Yahuwah. Was scanned to and fro throughout the whole earth. Then I answered and said to him, what are, those, what are these two olive trees? Look at this, y'all. What are these two olive trees that are at the right of the lamps of the menorah and at its left? 
And I further answered and said to him, what are these two olive trees that do what? Look. That drip into what? From which the golden oil drips. In other words, what are these two olive, olive branches that they ruach is going into the menorah? The oil is going into the menorah to keep the fire going. It specifically says that here. Then he answered me and said, do you not know what these are? And I said, no, my master. So he said, these are the two what? Mashiachs. The two anointed ones who stand beside Yahuwah of the whole earth. Still about the pressing of the, of the, of the, of the, of the nations. Mashiach, Mashiach. All right, let's go to Revelation 11. Come on, let's do it. Revelation 11. So you're right, the two, the two anointed ones, that is the chiefs. The two anointed ones. That is, that is symbolic of, remember the two lions? It's the same thing. The two lions, we did a whole series on the two lions. You who showed me that dream, he showed me the two lions with the two chiefs. They're the two chiefs, but it also, remember I said the two lions are the two chiefs, but it also symbolize the two houses, the nation of Israel, the, the, two, the, the, whole, the nation of Israel. They all go hand in hand. So the two olive trees represented the two chiefs at that time was Zerubbabel and Yahusha, the son of Zehozadeh. And it represents the whole nation of Israel. All right, let's keep going. All right, Revelation chapter 11. Verse 1. Y'all ready? Revelation 11, verse 1. We're going to go through verse 14. Y'all read along, please. Read along, please. Then I was given a read like a measuring rod. Remember what they said in uh, Zechariah 4, the plumb line is a ruby bell. That's, that's a measuring rod. All right. And the Malak stood saying, rise. And the Malak stood saying, rise and measure the temple of Elua, the altar and those who worship there. That was like the plumb line of Zerubbabel. Believe out the court which is outside the temple and do not measure it for it has been given to the heathen. So this is telling you something here. That the court was given to the heathen. Let me say this. Let me go on and say this. I'm going to put this out there now and then we'll get deep, deep into it shortly. The outer courts, in a sense symbolizes in a sense it was given over to the nations but the holy place the inner courts that's the kingdom the holy place symbolizes the kingdom the holy of holies is the throne room only sons can go into the holy place right only sons can go in the holy place only sons of the high priest our high priest is Yahushua, the high priest in the shamayim only sons can go into the kingdom. Everybody can't go. Oh, okay, go ahead. Hurry up real quick. So if the sons can go in, can the daughters go in? Sons and daughters. Told out. Told out for the clarification. Sons and daughters of the high priest. Only sons and daughters can go into the kingdom. All right. Verse 2. For it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will tread the Kodesh city underfoot for 42 months, and I will give power, and I will give, and I will give, ain't that what's been happening? I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy. Do y'all know when we were in Anderson? <laughs> this is crazy. People would get impartations of power and just start prophesying. That was happening the whole time in Anderson, y'all, and Augusta. It was crazy, y'all. That's the real school of the prophets, though. That's the real school of the prophets. We ain't going to go into that. That's so a whole other thing. Let's keep going. All right. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. These are the who? These are the two olive trees and the two menorahs now isn't this making a lot more sense 
standing forth before a lure of the earth. That's what it said in Zechariah 4. They said the two trees was the two anointed ones. Stand up before Yahuwah continually. Wasn't we standing before Yahuwah today? We standing before Yahuwah right now? How many people saw, saw that? Uh, 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 I know Uriel saw that. She saw, people saw, we was in the Shaman. Only sons and daughters can go into the Shaman. That's what the holy place represents. That's why can't nobody go into the holy place but the sons of the high priest only. Let's keep going. And, anyone, and if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. These have power to shut up heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over what? In other words, they have power to execute judgment on the nations. They have power over waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. Wasn't that what Musha was doing in, in Egypt? He had power to cause judgment on the nations. Yahuwah, these, were the two, these are the two witnesses. They had the power to declare judgment on the nations. All right, y'all through? Stay up, stay up. We got this. We're going we're gonna to get through this. Verse 7, when they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them, overcome them, and kill them. Oh, snap. And that happened to us as a nation, didn't it? That happened to us as a people. The beast rose up, came against us, overtook our people, and uh, killed us as a nation. It happened in 70 AD. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where our master Yahushua was crucified. So that happened in 70 AD, man. Our people were laid all over. It was, uh, they estimated it was in the millions. Rome came and sacked Jerusalem. It was during Pesach, so it was millions in Jerusalem during that time. All right, let's keep going. Then those from the people's tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days and not allow their dead bodies to be put into graves. Remember in Ezekiel 37, what did he say? What, did, what were the graves? What were the graves in the dry bones prophecy? So the word Sheo means graves. Let's go there, Ezekiel 37. Now, I got to get this. Now, we got we to we get this. Go ahead, Bob. Go ahead. We're going to get to that. I'm glad you asked. We're going to get to that. Ezekiel 37, y'all there? All right. Hannah and I, you're going to have to... Um, We'll figure it out after afterwards, Hannah. Now we'll figure it out later. Okay, hold on though. We're gonna read it though. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Let me see where I can find it. Let's see. Verse twelve. Verse eleven. Okay. Yeah. Let's do verse twelve. All right. Y'all there? Ezekiel thirty-seven, verse twelve. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says Yahuwah Lua, Behold, O my people, I will open your and cause you to come up from your and bring you into the land of Israel. The places where we were scattered across the four corners of the earth are called gray, your graves. That is Sheol or hell is another way you can call it. The places where our, our ancestors were scattered was called the graves. That's why being taken from your grave, I mean, that's why being taken from the places where you were scattered and brought back into the land is resurrection. Y'all following that? When you were exiled, that's equals death in the scriptures. That was established in the beginning with Adam and Eve, Yahuwah said, if you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. 
When Adam ate of the fruit, did he literally die? He, Yahuwah said, on that day you shall die when you eat that fruit. Adam ate that fruit and he died about 800 years later. But that day he was exiled out of the Kodesh land where Yahuwah had him. So at that time, Yahuwah was establishing that rule in the beginning that exile equals death. So when, when Yahuwah exiled Israel out of the nations and scattered them to the four corners of the earth, Israel as a people were, were dead. And the other nations were graves. That's like be, that's being in the outer, that's being out, kicked outside the gates. That's an outer darkness where there's nothing but wickedness and, 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 and vile things and sin. That's, that's Sheol. It's basically the places where Hasatan has dominion. That's Sheol. That's why he called them the graves. But he said, surely I will take you from your graves and bring you back into the, into the kingdom. Come huh? All right. Now go back to Revelation 11. Now y'all will get this a little bit better. Now nah, we're going to get this stuff, y'all. We're going to get him. This is exactly what's happening, fam. All right, verse 7, okay? Y'all ready now? Verse 7, Revelation 11. When they finished their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit. We know that that was wrong because even in Daniel and other scriptures, that was the fourth beast. Will make war against them, overcome them, and kill them. And the dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where our master was crucified. Then from those people, then, so that was, that's what happened in 70 AD, I submit. Then verse 9, then those from the people's tribes, tongues, and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days. That just means for a time frame. And not allow their dead bodies to be put in the graves. That's us wandering around the nations now. For all the nations to see. They make us run and jump for them to, uh, and, and, and give you crumbs for it. Make you feel like you're rich. Can be like, oh, one day you can be like Michael Jordan. That's the, that's the most, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's like the highest dream you have. Ain't nobody ever say, oh, I want to be the president or nothing like that. I want to have dominion. I want to have natural resources. I want, I want to have some mines, some diamond mines. One day I want to be like Michael Jordan. That was like the highest level dream for our people because the captivity was so harsh. I can jump, I can jump and shoot and, and, and run and jump for people and make a lot. Oh, that's, that's my dream. I can be like Michael Jordan and sing and dance for people. That's my highest dream. You know what I'm saying? Verse 10, and those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them, make merry and sing gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. So all y'all got to do is just read, uh, a little, uh, watch Reclaiming the Throne and you'll see how all this happened. Watch Reclaiming the Throne. That's what happened. When once we got scattered and we got destroyed and they were rejoicing over it, subduing us. They were doing everything. Now you had the transatlantic slave trade. You had the Spanish Inquisition. This was done by Rome, the fourth beast. Verse 11, okay. But now, now, now there's an appointed time for the shepherd to press the nations, though. So that's the time we're in now. So look at verse 11. Now after three and a half days, the what? The what? So that's Ezekiel 37. In other words, after the three and a half days, the dry bones wake up. Right. After three and a half days, the breath of life, which is what? The olive. That's the olive tree. The oil dripping in the receptacle. After the three and a half days, it's time for Israel to, re to resurrect. Remember, that's the sign of resurrection. The breath of life from Elua entered them, and they stood on their feet. And great fear fell on those who saw them. Who was the, who was the people who saw them? It was all the nations. And that's what we see that's happening right now. So many people done had visions, dreams of just walking around and people just being scared. 
people just being fearful. So many people be coming to me with dreams, visions, uh, even my sons. If you remember Yahoo had something like that, Yes, Yahoo, I believe, and yeah, several from the Mishpaka, because that's what's come. That's where we're at now. Verse 12. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up here. And they ascended to heaven in a cloud. This is what we saw today. This is what happened today. People saw a cloud saw us ascending and, and moving through the clouds, y'all. And their enemies saw them. In the same hour, there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. In the earthquake, 7,000 people were killed. So let me tell you, oh wait, hold on, let me tell y'all this too. Oh, snap, hold on. Where did the earthquake happen that it just happened? Y'all know that earthquake happened on Rosh Kodesh while we were out here going in and declaring to Yahuwah. I know this is hard to believe, but y'all know that was the direct result of, of, of the declarations that was happening here. That's why they happened that same night while we was here declaring. There was a principality that, that, uh, that Yahuwah gave us the victory over that night. And a great earthquake fell. Where? Where was Revelation written from? I ain't going to be able to put this online. <laughs> this is going to be a family discussion right here. Family discussion. You can't make this up, man. The seven assemblies in Revelation were all in Turkey. They were all in Turkey, y'all. <laughs> Modern day Turkey, what they call it's called an Asia Minor back then. Thirteen and verse thirteen. In the same hour there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. In the earthquake, 7,000 people were killed, and the rest were afraid and gave glory to the lure of heaven. So y'all can't go off of the numbers. Uh, I believe that 7,000 just means a completeness, a completion of, uh, amount of people, the number seven. The second woe was passed. Behold, the third woe is coming quickly. All right. So, I was trying to make sense out of this. So, um, y'all know about the two olive trees. I mean, y'all know that um, in my backyard, I have two fig trees. Um, the two fig trees were planted around the time when we, we first started the assembly. Um, so the most high was showing me a while ago that the, the, the two fig trees, you know, are a sign of, uh, you know, of some things surrounding the assembly at least were. And so knowing that we're transitioning on the Torah land, I wanted to transplant them because man, you know, we had the trees since they were young now they bear great fruit and all kind of stuff every year. So I wanted to transplant on the Torah land and I, I, I asked the most high, the most high was like, nah. Like, no. He answered me quick on that, too. It's like, oh, okay. Well, I guess that ain't happening. But I wonder why. You know, I was talking to, <laughs> talking to Manu. There, yeah, there's something to this. There's something to There got to be something to this. Why the most I don't want me to uh, move the fig trees over the toilet. land. I know why. I know why. We're going to get into that. All right, so the fig. All right, hurry up, son. Don't fig trees represent Yahuwah? So, no, they don't really represent Yahuwah, but they're associated, they're in the scriptures a lot, though. The fig trees are in the scriptures a lot. So, let's look at a couple of scriptures. Y'all ready? All right, I'm going to put them on the screen. 
This is Joel chapter 1, verse 12. The vine has dried up and the fig tree has withered. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree, also under the apple tree, all the trees of the field withered. Surely joy has withered away from the sons of men. All right. These are some scriptures surrounding the fig tree, okay? Yeah. Let's look at Luke chapter 13. This is a Yahushua. This is a parable from Yahushua. Y'all can read along on the screen, okay? He also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, sir, let it alone. Let it alone this year. Let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well. But if not, after that you can cut it down. So this was a, um, so the fig tree represents the nation of Israel and also the olive tree does too. So to answer your uh, question, Anthony, the fig tree represents the nation of Israel. All right. All right. So this is, uh, Yahushua made this parable and it was really about what was going on in Israel at the time that Yahushua was walking the earth. I submit that this was about Yahushua not finding any fruit when he was down there. Because it said, look, it said, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came seeking fruit and found it. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and found none. Remember, Yahushua was out there for about three and a half years, right? So this was probably about the three-year point. He's like, man, I ain't find those. It was, yeah, it's like, look, I ain't find no fruit out here. And basically, the keeper said, um, said, give it one more year, basically. And if it bears fruit, that's great. If not, cut it down. What does that mean? Israel didn't, I, I, Israel didn't make it. He waited, he tarried, and they still didn't bear fruit. And we know that. We know how wicked Israel was during the time of Yahushua, right? But the interesting thing about it is that the nation was symbolized by the fig tree. Y'all following me? Okay. Yeah, Yahushua was basically telling them that they were not bearing fruit, and they had one more year to get it together. That's basically what Yahushua was saying. They were not bearing fruit, and they had one more year to get it together. Now you go further into the Brit Hadashah, further into Yahushua's ministry. Now you get to Yahu 21. Y'all know this is further into his ministry now. In the Boker, he returned to the city. He was hungry, and seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves. And said to it, let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately the fig tree withered away. So y'all know what that means now after looking at the parable earlier in his ministry that he had? By this time, basically, this was a sign that the time was up. This is the time when he cursed the fig. That was a sign that the time was up. Uh, Israel, Israel was going to be cut down as a nation. When the disciples, because look, when the disciples saw what they marveled, saying, how did the fig tree wither away so soon? Yahushua answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to this fig tree, because he declared against the fig tree and it died, right? But also, if you say to this mountain, be removed. Y'all didn't know that the, uh, when he talked about, the, about uh, speaking against the mountain, this was associated with the fig tree. But if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believe it, you will receive it. We thinking, I know in the church, oh, man, I mean, man, I, I could just pray, ask for a new car. Uh, nah, man, he talking about declaring against the nations, man. 
talk about declaring against the nations, y'all. That's why what Moe Manu said early, earlier about, okay, now we're on the next level. The cutting has happened now. Now we're in this ascension level, and it's about your MU9 now. You got to move in a different level of MU9 in this, in this time. Because now it's time to move these mountains, man. Like, for real. Just like Zerubbabel. What is what did they say? What did they say to Zeru about Zerubbabel and Zechariah four? He basically said the mountain will be cut down before Zerubbabel because he had that emu. Now he was a declarer. May I submit? Man, this is wild, man. This is wild. Let's go to Bereshit chapter three. So, this is what I submit to y'all. The fig tree. Hey, y'all already gonna know why you already know where I'm going. The fig tree symbolizes the nation of Israel when they're in captivity. The olive tree is the nation of Israel moving, moving by the ruach. Moving in righteousness as a nation, a free people. The fig tree represents Israel while in captivity. That's why when the uh, fig tree was spoken of uh, with Yahushua, it was during, uh, is why, the, why they were under Roman rule. Rome had dominion over them. That's why the, it was a fig tree being used with Yahushua. But then you had a, a prophecy in Revelation where you had these free people. They called the two sticks. Oh, oh well, my bad. No, the two witnesses who were two olive trees because they were a free people who were moving and prophesying, et cetera, et cetera. But I'll go ahead and throw this out there, y'all. The fig tree is, uh, is also the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The olive tree is the tree of life. The fig tree, the tree of the knowledge of thub and ra, to good and evil. All right, let's go to Genesis 3. Oh, my bad, Genesis 1, yeah, Genesis 3. Yes, sir. All right, let's start with Genesis 2 first. Let's start with Genesis 2 first. And let's start with verse 15. Y'all ready? Genesis chapter 2 and then verse 15. I think I remember hearing you say that too, baby. All right, verse 15. Maybe you were singing it, yeah. All right, hold on. Y'all pay attention. Come on, don't, don't start shoveling on me yet. Hold on, let's get it done. All right, verse 15. Then Yahuwah Alua took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to do what? So do y'all remember uh, Exodus 27? Verse 21, I'll just read it. Exodus 27, verse 21, it says, In the tabernacle of meeting outside the veil, which is before the testimony, Aaron and his sons shall tend it, talking about the menorah, shall tend it from Arev to Boker. Okay, let's go back to Genesis 2. So they were commanded to tend and keep it as well, in a sense. 
Then Yahuwah Lua took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend and keep it. Just like the Most High had set apart the sons of Aaron to tend and keep the lamp so that it will burn continually. What did they have to do to tend and keep the lamp? They had to make sure it had oil in it always so the fire would burn continually. The fire could never go out 24-7 continually. So that took, that took constant tending and keeping. That, 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 that took constant attention. All right. Verse 16, and Yahuwah Alua commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of Thub and Ra you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. See, it says, in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. And Yahuwah Alua said, it is not Thub that man should be alone, okay, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, didn't it talk about, where they go into the, uh, the tree of life? Yeah. Oh, verse, uh, I, went, I didn't go up far enough. Let's look at verse 9. I want you all to see this. And out of the ground, chapter 2, verse 9. And out of the ground, Yahuwah Alua made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and food for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Y'all got it? Let's skip to chapter 3. Uh, chapter 2, verse 9. Yes, because we're in a different place now. We're in a different place. We are now. All right, let's go to chapter 3. Let's look at verse 1. Uh, let's look at verse 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was thub for food, and I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all that it was the fig tree. But let's read this. How do we miss this, y'all? How do we miss this? When the woman saw that the tree was thub for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of the both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together. How do we miss that? How do we miss that? How? How, Sway? Absolutely. How do we miss this, y'all? And made themselves coverings. Made themselves coverings. <laughs> All right, hurry up, son. Hurry up. If if Adam lived, if Adam lived eight hundred years after he ate it, then how long did Eve live? I don't think they gave the specifics on how long she lived, but I, I, I bet it was a long time too. Most I was like, he said it quick. I was like, man. The, the fig tree symbolized um, the nation of Israel, but it's why they're in captivity. A lot of times the fig tree is surrounded around um, judgment in the scriptures. It's, it's, the fig tree is also depicted Thub in the scriptures as well, many times as well. But remember, it's the tree of Thub and evil. So that makes sense. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, who is revealing the mystery to the Kodashim, y'all? When they ate the figs, their eyes was open, so they tried to, man. All right, let's, uh, 
So then when they did it, they knew they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Verse eight, let's keep going. We're gonna have to read it from here because I don't got it on the screen. And they heard the sound of Yahuwah Alua walking in the garden in the cool of the day. No, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and go here, y'all. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and go here. So, what do they use fig leaves to cover? Their nakedness. So, what do you consider your nakedness? It's your reproductive parts, right? Let's 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 uh do our best to be mature. But your nakedness basically is the reproductive parts that you are supposed to cover, basically. So basically, they use fig leaves to cover their fruit. Because the reproductive parts is basically where the seed is and how you bear fruit. Y'all get what I'm saying? So this is an interesting thing about figs. I told y'all to be grown. This is this is fruit. What? I told y'all we gotta be mature. We gotta <laughs> we gotta be mature, y'all. But I but I noticed this when I with I noticed this with my fig trees, that they do represent the male reproductive parts. Um, they even so if y'all ever had dogs or anything, when dogs become mature, what happens? Their uh, reproductive parts drop. You know, some people will, will go when they, you know, when those things drop, you know, okay, he's going to be trying to, you know, have babies. You need to go on, go on get them neutered or something. You know what I'm saying? But that happens with, uh, you know, Akio might not know this uh, most, but with human beings that happens too. When a male gets to a certain age, his reproductive parts drop. So I noticed that with my fig trees, that's how I know when they're ripe. When they're not ripe, they, they're stiff. But when they're, ready to, when they're ready for consumption, you know because they drop like that. And that's the same with, uh, with females, okay, in a sense too, with, with their re reproductive organs. So it's interesting. Yeah, please, hold the quick, please. Hold, hold. Hold on, son. Just um, write it down. No, put it in. The, hey, you know what? Jungle. Questions in the jungle chat. Boom. Put it in the jungle chat. Oh, y'all in the parking lot. Oh, yeah. Just throw it in there. So the fig trees, the fig leaves on the fig tree are used to cover, cover the fruit, too, to cover the re reproductive parts. So I just want to. Just to bring, just to bring more home to the point that this was the fig tree that was the was the was the tree of uh, of the knowledge of good and evil. That's why I'm bringing this up. So they basically try to, like y'all never thought of what made them try to use fig leaves to cover them parts. They saw that. That's what they saw. This is the forbidden fruit, y'all. This is the forbidden fruit in the Torah, the figs. Forbidden fruit, shaped like, you know, uh, um, those things. Re <laughs> shaped like reproductive organs. On top of that, this is a literal um, cross-section of a male reproductive part. And they look the same, very similar to the cross section if you open up a fig. Also, figs are known to be very healthy for your reproductive parts. They are known to, to boost fertility. They are known for that. Figs are one of the most healthiest, I mean, they're one of the most healthiest fruits you can possibly get. 
They were in the garden. You know, there's a lot of stuff you ain't going to even see in the scriptures that we eat. Bananas, um, broccoli, all kind of stuff. Figs was in there since the, we know that figs was in the garden of Eden, y'all. One of the most healthiest fruits you can eat. And y'all don't, don't now now after sin came on, after sin came into the world, it wasn't against it wasn't it was okay to eat the figs after that. Oh, okay. That's why Yahushua came, he wanted to eat figs. Remember that Yahushua came, he cursed the fig tree because it didn't bear fruit. You know what I'm saying? But Okay, let's go back to Genesis 3. I know, man, Yahuwah is amazing. Yahuwah is amazing. So then I, I'm, I'm going to start with verse 7 again, okay? Y'all ready? Reading along, verse 7. Genesis 3, verse 7. Genesis 3, verse 7. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of Yahuwah Elua walking in the garden in the cool of the day. That's Arel. And Adam and his Eshai hid themselves from the presence of Yahuwah Elua among the trees of the garden. Then Yahuwah Elua called to Adam and said to him, where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and i hid myself and he said who told you that you was naked have you eaten from the tree of which i commanded you that you should not eat and the man said the woman whom you gave to be with me she gave me of the tree and i ate and yahuwah Elua said to the woman what is this you've done the woman said the serpent had deceived me and i ate she had an excuse y'all but it was true because in the brief how the they said that she really was got deceived so what did Yahuwah Elua say to the servant? Because you have done this, you are what? Then Yahushua cursed the fig tree and the bread hadasha. Then I tell you that um, a lot of times that, uh, that, the, that actually the fig tree symbolizes Israel when they're in captivity. So in other words, the fig tree symbolizes Israel when they're under a curse. Because the fig tree is associated with the curse. <clears throat> it's because they ate of the fig tree Cursed was the serpent and cursed was, the, uh, was mankind, right? So the fig tree is associated with the nation of Israel when they're under the curses, under the Deuteronomy 28 curses, when they're in captivity. That's the fig tree. So when, I, when we started the assembly, we were just an assembly that, that was still, you know, in this cabin, Babylon. But now Yahuwah had blessed us to ascend and, and, tra and transitioned us, and, and then we planted olive trees, and he's... He's with a planting of Yahuwah, Isaiah 61. He planted olive trees on, uh, on Torah land. That he, the land that he's given us. And so, no. No, nah, nah, them fig trees can't go on Torah land. They got to stay right there. Let one of the Babylonians who buy the house, they got, they, 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 they look at that as a thube thing. Yeah, it's got two fig trees, man. <laughs> They're going to be happy. We probably could add a little more on the price for that. <laughs> because you have done this. All right, verse 14. Let's get back to reading. Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise Yaakov. Remember that? To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception and pain. You will bring forth children. Your, your desire shall be for your each, and he shall rule over you. Then Adam, he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife. Listen, y'all, this is deep. 
because what we saw when we was down there in Anderson, that, um, there was some judgments happening, and a lot of it was because there were people who, who heeded the voice of, of their wife um, before, instead of heeding the word of Yahuwah. They, they were putting their east shots over Yahuwah. Because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it. Curse is the ground for your sake. In toil, you shall eat of it. Y'all know this was Deuteronomy 28. That was part of the curse of Deuteronomy 28. That you will toil, you will toil. The ground will be, he said, I'll make the, 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 the ground like bronze and in the, in the heavens something. Iron and the ground, bronze, something like that. Basically, the ground will be cursed. You'll grow stuff, you won't be able to eat it. You'll toil, you won't be able to enjoy your work. That was the curse that was from the beginning. Curse is the ground for your sake. And toil, you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, to dust you shall return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Also for Adam and his Isha, Yahuwah Elua made what? Made what? Made tunics of skin and clothed them. Oh, snap. So the, the, the fig leaves were not capable of covering those parts. They probably had stuff showing, trying to use fig leaves. The fig leaves, as soon as they, they try to run, it, 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 it breaks. Like, oh, snap. Man, this stuff ain't working well, man. Most I like, no. Nah. So he made tunics of skin and clothed them. What kind of skin did he use? Animal skin. What kind of animal? He used, I submit he used the goat skin. He covered them. See, that was to cover their nakedness. What does the nakedness symbolize? Your sin, your shame. Goat, it's the skin of the goat. It's the, what, what, in the day of covering, what is the day of covering? The day of? The day of atonement, that's what Kapoor means, covering. Remember, Kasep, silver, you know, Kapoor, covering. The day of covering on Yom Kapoor, what do they have to kill in order to cover the sins of the nation of Israel? They have to kill the goat, right? Okay. So I submit that that was the goat that was used to cover Adam's sin. This is the word for skin that was used. That's the word ur. It's iron yod, uh, iron wab yod. This is the Hebrew word used for skin. That's ur. This is the Hebrew word for goat. Shair. That's, uh, that's the Hebrew word for skin. Or, let me know when y'all can change. And this is the Hebrew word for goat. It has that iron rest in there as well. So there's just a lot, there's similar letters in there. Yes, sir. Y'all go to Ezekiel, I mean Exodus 26. And then the word for uh, Hebrew word for goat is shayir, shayir, shayir. So you still have that iron rest in there. So let's go to Exodus twenty-six. Y'all there? Exodus twenty-six. Yes, sir. Exodus twenty-six. Shemot twenty-six. All righty. Y'all ready? Moreover, you shall make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine woven linen and blue, purple, and scarlet thread with artistic designs of cherubim. You shall weave them. The length of each curtain shall be 28 cubits and the width of each curtain four cubits. And every one of the curtains shall have the same measurements. 
Five curtains shall be coupled. So this is about the curtains, y'all. Shall be coupled to one another, and the other five curtains shall be coupled to one another. You shall make loops of blue yarn on the edge of the curtain on the self of one set, and likewise you shall do that on the outer edge of the other's curtain on the second set. Fifty loops you shall make in one curtain, and fifty loops you shall make on the edge of the curtain that is on the end of the second set that the loops may be clasped with one another. And you shall make fifty clasps and couple the curtains together with the clasps so that it may be one tabernacle. All right, I want y'all to pay attention to verse 7. You shall also make curtains of? You shall also make curtains of? Goat's hair to be a tent over the tabernacle. So there was goat's hair was used to cover the tabernacle, which is the body. Toda, toda. Then they say your body is the tabernacle of the Ruach HaKodesh. It's the tabernacle of Yahuwah. So it makes sense. Remember, they said that Eve was the mother of all living. So this is symbolic of mankind here, of the body that they were covered. The fig leaves were taken off. The fig leaves wasn't adequate. And he put a proper covering on them, which I submit was a goat. Because all throughout the rest of the Torah, the, uh, you'll see goats being used to cover. That's why Yom Kippur, it was the goat that was, it was the blood of the goat. It was two goats. Yom Kippur is about two goats. You, that's, that's the, I think that might be the only feast day where goats is the focus. You know, because Pesach, it's about the lamb, it's about the sheep, you know, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Also, let's think about this real quick a little bit. What happened when, remember the story of Joseph? Story of Joseph when his brothers turned on him, he had the he had the uh, coat of many colors, and his brothers turned on him, and and and, and they, they 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 sold him into slavery, sold him into captivity, and how did they cover their sin? They killed the goats, and they put the blood on the goat of the goat on what the coat of many colors. Go back to Genesis three. I meant to mention this. There's a key word used here. Let's look at verse 23. No. Verse 21. Y'all see this? Genesis 3. Genesis 3.21, y'all there? Also, for Adam and his wife, Yahuwah Elua made what? Made tunics of skin. Tunics of skin. So they probably just had like fig leaves just covering their waist part. But then Yahuwah made tunics of skin. So that word for tunics is actually the same word used for the coat of many colors that was given to Joseph, ketonet. It's the same word. That is the same word used for the garments of the priest as well. Ketonet. So, What happens on Yom Kippur? You kill the goats, and don't they, aren't they supposed to sprinkle blood on things? Put blood on the... Actually, in this Torah portion, don't they kill the uh, animal and then uh, sprinkle blood? They got to sprinkle blood on their garments from the bull. Joseph brothers turned on him. They sold him to slavery and to cover their sin... They killed a goat and put the blood of the goat on, their, on Joseph's keto net, the coat of many covers. I want, I want, I'm trying to bring this out so y'all can see why it was a goat 
that the Most High used to cover Adam and Eve. That's what's used for coverings many times. That was what was used to cover the tabernacle. That was what was used to cover the sins of the, the, uh, the sons of Israel who sold off Joseph. Man, hold up. What happened with Esau and Jacob? Oh, snap. Esau and Jacob. Esau and Jacob. Esau and Jacob, there was a garment that his mama, though how did Jacob get the birthright? By covering himself with goat skin. By covering himself with goat skin. Let's go to, uh, y'all still on Genesis 3? Did y'all leave? Hopefully I didn't leave. Y'all still there? 21? Verse 22, then Yahuwah Elua said, behold, the man has become like one of us. To know Thub and Ra, and now lest he put out his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, Yahuwah Elua sent him out of the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Y'all, I'll submit to y'all that the olive trees is a sign that we are no longer driven away, but we have access to the tree of life again. Yeah. We have access to the tree of life again. Rebirth of a nation, Hebrew kingdom building.